It does not roar like a conventional engine. It screams, a high-pitched, terrifying shriek of a jet turbine trapped inside a 70-ton body of steel. This is the M1 Abrams, the apex predator of land warfare. It moves with a brutal grace, capable of spinning in place like a dancer and accelerating to over 70 kilometers per hour. A steel juggernaut that defies its own colossal weight. Its most unnerving feature is its stability. The hull pitches and rolls violently over rough terrain, but the 120mm cannon remains perfectly still, locked onto its target as if guided by an unseen hand. It is a predator, always watching, always ready to strike. And when it strikes, the result is absolute. A tungsten or depleted uranium dart, traveling at five times the speed of sound, is unleashed. There is no defense. It is the physical embodiment of overwhelming force. A 70-ton fortress that moves like a sports car and strikes with the force of a thunderbolt. But how do you forge such a monster? How do you create a machine that is at once a shield, a spear, and a chariot of fire? The life of a tank is measured by its ability to survive. It all begins with the shell. In the Lima Army tank plant in Ohio, the only place on earth where the Abrams is born, giant plates of rolled homogeneous steel armor, inches thick, are cut and beveled. These are not ordinary steel plates. They are the bones of the beast. Robotic arms moving with relentless precision weld these plates together, forming the iconic, angular shapes of the hull and turret. Every weld is a line of defense, inspected by X-ray and ultrasound, because a single weakness can mean the difference between life and death. But the true secret to the Abrams' survival is not the steel alone. It is what lies within, the special armor. A classified composite of ceramics, metals, and other exotic materials, baked and bonded into modular blocks, this is the secret recipe, a technological black magic designed to shatter and dissipate the energy of incoming projectiles. The steel provides the strength, the composite provides the soul of its survivability. Bring it down easy. Looks good. All right, seal it up. A tank's soul may be its armor, but its heart is the engine. The Abrams is not powered by a diesel engine. It is powered by a jet engine. The AGT-1500 gas turbine. A 1,500 horsepower power plant that shares more DNA with a helicopter than a truck. It is a masterpiece of compact power, capable of running on almost any flammable liquid. But its true advantage is its power to weight ratio giving this 70-ton behemoth its terrifying acceleration. In a dedicated facility, hundreds of precisely machined turbine blades, each a marvel of metallurgy, are assembled into the engine's core. The entire power plant, including its complex transmission, is built as a single, massive power pack. This allows an entire four-ton engine to be swapped out in the field in under an hour. The heart of the beast is not just powerful, it is replaceable. If the armor is the shield, then the turret is the sword arm. Weighing over 20 tons on its own, the turret is a fortress within a fortress. It houses the crew, 
the advanced optics, and the tank's primary weapon, the M256A-1 120mm smoothbore cannon. Forged in Watervliet Arsenal, this legendary cannon is a masterpiece of precision engineering, capable of hitting a moving target over two miles away. The assembly of the turret is a complex ballet of hydraulics, electronics, and heavy steel. The sophisticated fire control system, the commander's independent thermal viewer, and the loader's station are all integrated into this rotating citadel. It is the fist of the steel knight, ready to deliver the final blow. My The components are now ready. The unbreakable shell, the turbine heart, the fist of steel. The final spectacular act of creation is at hand. The final marriage. In a moment of immense, carefully controlled power, a massive overhead crane lifts the entire 20-ton turret into the air. It hovers for a moment over the empty turret ring of the hull. Guided by human hands and laser sights, it is lowered with millimeter precision. With a deep, resonant thud, the two giants meet. The turret settles into its ring. The knight has been joined with its sword arm. The monster is now whole. It is no longer a collection of parts. It is a main battle tank. Get the upper bolts first. Starting the sequence now. Watch your hands on the flange. But a sword is not truly forged until it is tested. Every single Abrams that rolls off the assembly line must endure a brutal trial by fire. It is pushed to its absolute limits on a punishing test track. It plows through deep mud, climbs 60 degree slopes, and even drives completely submerged through a water course, its turret just above the waterline. Every system, from the suspension to the engine, is stressed to the breaking point. Then comes the test of its true purpose. On the firing range, the tank demonstrates its lethal ballet. It fires on the move, its gun stabilization system keeping the cannon locked on target while the hull bounces violently. It engages multiple targets, its turret spinning with terrifying speed and precision. This is the final proof, the culmination of a million hours of labor and a century of armored warfare evolution. It emerges from the trial, covered in mud and scarred by the heat of its own cannon, but unbroken. A perfect fusion of armor, mobility, and firepower. A modern steel knight, forged in fire, ready for the unforgiving battlefield. <laughs>